What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Football Capital and this is the quarter final review of the World Cup. <sighs> this World Cup just keeps bringing up more and more surprises. Brazil have been knocked out. Netherlands out. Portugal, the GOAT, out. England out as well. Let's get straight into it. Let's start with that Croatia and Brazil game. Now, <laughs> I've been copping it a little bit by the Croatian supporters in the, in the DMs. You know what? I didn't pick you guys to get out of the group. And I've put you last in the group as well. I didn't pick you guys to, to beat Japan. And I didn't pick you guys to win this one as well against Brazil. But you did get the job done on penalties 4-2. And you thought 1-0. One, one um, Neymar gets that goal. Fantastic goal by Brazil. He slots at home. But then with two minutes to go in extra time, Croatia... Get that goal, get that goal, and it takes in. They go into penalties again, like the game against Japan. Croatia, uh, Croatia's goalkeeper steps up to the plate, makes fantastic saves, and then Marquinhos at the end hits the post um, with his final shot, and it ends there for the Brazilians. They were my tip to actually win the whole tournament. Um, Brazil, Neymar there. You know, unlucky for him. Are we going to see him at another World Cup or is this his last one? Look, they still got a squad stacked, do you know what I mean? So it's not like the next World Cup in four years, they're gonna, it's going to be worrying for them. All, their, all the talent they got on show, all, they're all young. There's maybe, you know, Thiago Silva's and, and the likes of them players won't be around in the next World Cup. But you gotta, you got to say, I think they're, they've set up nicely for the, for the next few World Cups. So it'll be interesting to see what they do uh, in the next few tournaments. But Croatia, to, let's be honest, though, let's be honest. They haven't really been playing the best football. Um, and I wouldn't even say it's, it's not even parked a bus. I just think they haven't really been exciting. They, they're not, they haven't been as good as the last World Cup where they did make the final. But, hey... You got to give them credit, showing fighting spirit through the whole game, throughout the whole tournament, proving everyone wrong, definitely proving me wrong. Now they tee up a game against Argentina on Wednesday morning. I think it's our time, um, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do in, in that one. Yeah, Croatia. They could. Hey, we could see another. We could see another France Croatia World Cup final. You never know. But well done to them. Well done. They they put their penalties away perfectly. Unfortunately, it is what it is for Brazil. They don't get the win on the day. But then right after that, one of the games of the tournament, you have to say the Netherlands and Argentina. The other goat keeps the dream alive for Argentina. But it wasn't that simple. I mean, that first goal, all right, great goal. But that pass by Messi, that reverse uh, pass with the left foot, puts them up 1-0. And look, to be honest, the game... <sighs> The game was kind of in the balance in that first half. Second half, again, Argentina come out and come out strong around the 70th minute. That's when, um, I can't remember who, who got fouled, but I don't think, to be honest, I do think it's a little bit of a soft, um, little bit of a soft penalty in my opinion. I think, was it Dumfries that went for the block, but it was cut back and then I think that trailing foot took out the player, but they went, I don't even know if they checked it on VAR, but, it didn't look like it got reviewed, but Messi steps up to the play and what a fantastic penalty to make it 2-0. But then, hey, the Netherlands come straight back into it. You know, they they showed fight throughout the whole game. They got, it was, I can't remember who it was, a flick-on a flick on header. Um, and um, they get in the 83rd minute and then the 11 minutes into extra time. 11 minutes into extra time. Literally, the last kick... Uh, the last kick of the game, uh, we seen almost like a FIFA, FIFA goal. <laughs> Play it to the player next to the wall, turn and take a shot. And you got to take your chances. You got to take them risks as well. We know Martinez; fan he's been a fantastic keeper. He's, he's provided Argentina some um, very, very important saves this tournament. And to catch him off guard as well a little bit. I think he was expecting maybe to, that ball to, to go over the over the wall and him to make a save, but they play it low, they play it short, and it's in the back of the net. Goes into, um, oh, even, even before, was it extra time? Or towards full time of the extra time, I think. 
Um, Argentina, they just look like Di Maria from the corner, uh, going for it, direct from the corner. Then um, Enzo Fernandez outside the box, taking a shot, hitting the post. I think that was the last kick of the game before before going into penalties. And um, Van Dyke steps up. Uh, Martinez makes the save. And it was very hard to, uh, t- to come back from there. They missed another one as well. And um, Martinez, just the, the star, the star in them penalty shooters. And uh, Lataro Martinez uh, grabs the winner. Argentina through the goat is still alive. Well, the other goat is still alive in, in the competition. And they tee up a, a semi final against Croatia. Then uh, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, the last time they met in the World Cup, Croatia, I think, slapped them up 3-0. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Can the Croatians get it over the line? And you never know. I, I'm not even going to predict that because every time I've predicted a Croatia game, oh, I've got it wrong. So I'll leave that one as is. Um, but then the following day, Morocco won. Portugal nil. Ronaldo doesn't start again. Morocco, who would have expected these guys to make it all the way uh, to the semi-finals? I think I, I don't think a lot of people picked them to get, even get out of the group, let alone into a semi-final of a World Cup. But you got to give them credit; they showed some fighting spirit throughout the whole throughout the whole tournament, and not just that. Some of the football that have been played prior to I think this game, I think this is probably one of their worst performances in my opinion. But they still got the job done, still got the result. Um, but I think there's a lot of players now out for the game against France, but Portugal, look, uh, I think I think some of the substitutions were made a little bit too early. was a bit of a panic to bring on Ronaldo straight away, a bit of debate whether he should have started in this one. You know, in hindsight, you could say maybe, but I think once he came on, yes, of course, they, they created more chances because, you know, um, Morocco has parked the bus 11 plays behind the ball They weren't going to go over They, they weren't even thinking about um, Attacking and even getting another goal So it's expected by Portugal To to be Not not even on the counter But to put on the pr- uh, to, to pull on the pressure And create chances The problem is You bring in Ronaldo And it's it's almost like The Portuguese left backs And right backs And wing backs And this, whoever uh, Bruno Fernandes Your centre midfielders And all that Playing laser tag just spraying balls from anywhere, trying to get it into Ronaldo. Now, I think he should have came on maybe a little bit later in the game uh, because he just looked, the movement up front was just a little bit better. Ronaldo comes in, he had that one uh, one opportunity where he had to take it quick and if he took another touch, the defender closes him down. Then that link up with Felix where maybe Felix could have done a little bit better to get that shot on target. Well, he got on target, but right to the keeper. So... I just think Ronaldo. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to rip into him too, <laughs> too much. Once again, I've, he's copped it from me from the last last couple of weeks. But um, I think he should have maybe came on a little bit later. Let the boys that were on the field, let them work it out. And I think Portugal maybe could have got a goal there, but it wasn't to be for them. But what happens now? What happens now with Ronaldo? I mean, is this his last World Cup? I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I have a feeling that he's not done. I've got a feeling that we could see Ronaldo at another Euro and possibly at, a, at another World Cup. And I think in, in them tournaments, that's when you're going to probably see him more, more on the bench. And I think he might learn what his new role should be, you know, um, where he's a bit more of a motivator coming into these games. Because you saw in the last game, the player uh, Ramos scores a hat-trick and doesn't really look that happy or that pleased for him. I know he was celebrating for one of the goals, but just in general, I don't know. I don't know. But it will be interesting to see. I don't think he's done. And I don't even think Messi's done as well. This might not be their last World Cup. If Messi wins the World Cup, then there's a chance that he might say, you know what, that's it for me on the international level. Let the younger players coming through uh, take the reins. But if they don't win it, I do see a world where Messi and Ronaldo... Possibly play another World Cup. You never know. You never know. Um, But what happens with Ronaldo now? Obviously, he's not at Man United anymore. Club football is only two weeks away. So what happens? Where does he go? There's. It doesn't even look like there's any new bids by any of these so-called, you know, European giants. 
no one really wants him as from so far, no one has really put in a bid except for that Saudi Saudi Arabian team, the Al, Al Nasser, where this guy going to go play in space, some space program or something. Maybe he can go break some records over there, maybe score a, a first person to score in space, get a first hat-trick in 0G or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, he can play, uh, what's his name, Elon Musk and SpaceX um, in, in the you know, El, El Spacico. You know, there you go, Ronaldo in the El Spacico. I don't know. No one really, no one's really in for him at the moment. That's the only club that's put in a bid and put in an offer. So it will be interesting to see what happens with his club career, Cristiano Ronaldo. Look, I know I've been put a lot of shit on him, but he has been a fantastic servant to the game if he does choose to to leave in terms of the international stage, but what he's done for football, I think um, this generation will always, always remember, never forget what he's done for the game. But unfortunately, they lose to Morocco and he's, um, yeah, not going, not going into the semis and he's not winning the World Cup this time around. So the next game after that, let's go, let's move on there. England and France. Well, what do we say about this one? Gareth Southgate and the boys, it is not coming home for England once again. Another disappointing result. It was actually a fantastic game. And to be honest, I think England probably were the better team in terms of the chances created and all that. But look, questionable uh, first goal by France to Amani. Great finish and like what a promising talent from France. You know, what I mean, they always they always come up with um, some of the the best talents in the world. And you know, even with Pogba, Kante, and Ukempembe's and all these players that are not playing in, in in that French team, they still pull something out of the out of their hat and they bring these players through. And it was a fantastic goal. He took it well, uh, but obviously the the questions were was was there a foul on Saka? Maybe a couple of seconds at at the beginning of that play. So. And watching uh, watching it back, it does look like a foul. But did England have enough time to maybe stop that ball um, and maybe break that uh, play down? And so that, I think possibly that's the reason why the um, that goal was given. But second half, uh, sorry, at the end of that, at the end of that half, was at the end of that half when Harry Kane scored? Yeah. So then, like towards the end of that half. No, it was in the second half, right? Am I tripping out? Second half. Um, yeah, Southgate, uh, sorry, um, Harry Kane gets the penalty, slots it away nicely. But then, 80, in the 80th minute, they get given another one, Mount, Mount, I think got shoved in the back there. And I think there was a bit of a curse. I think this man's the guy to blame. Actually, I just want to say this before Harry Kane takes his pen. It's going to be ironic. Harry Kane's the best penalty taker in the world, by the way. That guy, when he finds a spot, nails it. Nails it. Like, when you see these Bruno Fernandes that take the little pirouettes up, the Georgians take the little pirouettes, trying to find the cable. Harry Kane finds a spot and absolutely hits it. And we're going to see it right now. now. Harry Kane, under the pressure. Don't put me wrong, man. Don't put me wrong now. I'm just actually this will be the time. You can't be calling him the best penalty taker. I'm an Arsenal fan. I, like, this guy is absolutely unreal taking penalties. Under the, like, pressured situations as well. World They've done it again. Seen. They've taken four minutes to take this pen. Here we go. Oof. Harry Kane after giving a big rap for him. Slots it. Oh, wait. he put it over the bar. Oh, my God. Oh, no, Stav. <sighs> They'll get one. They'll get oh, one. Oh, no, it, Stav. <laughs> the best. Oh, no. What was it? The best penalty taker in the world. I feel like. And it's still somewhere. It might, it might hit the, the roof over here. Yeah, producer that, that, Shabs. That is getting clipped up by the producers. Cut. Producer Cut. Shabs is losing <laughs> oh it right gosh. now. Stav, I feel out. like you invited that result. You talked him up way too much. I'm actually shocked. Did he send it like over, over? Oh yeah. my God. Somebody, it's still in the air somewhere. Back to North Stav London. Stav. He puts, <laughs> he puts the voodoo on England and Harry Kane misses that one. Yeah, look, one of the best penalty takers in the world. I mean, when it counts, when it counts, he didn't slaughter. And we all know he's a Tottenham player. And a Tottenham player would always find a way to bottle it. You know what I mean? And he's, he kind of cost, I wouldn't say cost England in this one, but it did cost them maybe in the last one. He maybe should have passed the Sterling, the one against Croatia, but we'll never know. But to me, look, Southgate, he stayed with the, I think the same, pretty much the same lineup as the last game. I think 
a substitution should have been made early around in the second half from maybe the 50th minute around there to the 60th minute we were, England was on top you need to you need to start um uh, bringing on some of the players early Rashford get him on he's a player that can get him behind I thought he him, he should have changed it up to begin with um, maybe put Rashford in to start instead of Foden or Saka but I think Saka actually did a good job um, on that on that right hand side against uh, Hernandez and and he even took him off as well. I don't know if he he should have kept uh, he should have kept on uh, Saka in my opinion and he put on Raheem Sterling from from the news that we saw a couple of days ago was it that he something happened to his house house got robbed so he went back to London then back to Qatar and you're giving him a game and I don't I don't think he was bad when he came on but do you put in someone else do you put in Rashford earlier do you take or do you take off someone else maybe take off a Jordan Henderson uh, maybe take off a, a Declan Rice maybe take someone else off and go actually go for it. You had nothing to lose, and then you, the the changes start happening after. Like you give you give Rashford what four minutes of, and then plus extra time, whatever, whatever it was. But there's not enough time, even though you had that opportunity, which is pretty much the last kick of the game to um to get the equalizer, free kick go just hits the top of the net. But you need to get players like that, get them involved earlier. You saw England was on top. I don't know. You're looking for someone to create your chances. Yeah, you, you you brought James Madison. How many goals and how many assists has he had in the Premier League? He's been one of the outstanding players, and he had, and he played zero minutes the whole tournament. So, and we can see, I, don't, I don't know if he favours players. I know I know um, uh, Harry Maguire. Everyone talks about him. He, he hasn't played at all for United, pretty much, but he's picked him here. And he's, look, to be fair, if we if to be fair, he's done well. Harry Maguire's done. He, he has done well, but. I don't know. I don't know. To me, Gareth, Gareth Southgate, I think some of the changes probably need to be a bit earlier. But what happens to him now? What happens to Southgate now? Does he stay or does he move on uh, with this England team? The Euros are in two, in two years, World Cup. Uh, you know, it, ca- it comes quick. But if he, does, if he does decide to step down, do you guys think it is the right time for him to go? Um, has he done enough with his team? Or has, he, has he pushed them to the limits? Um, I just think his in-game management for me, it's it's not good enough. I mean, to try like these players, like you look at half the squad, they're all they're all in teams um, coached by some of the best managers, right? Like um, you got Pep Guardiola, you got Klopp, uh, even Ten Hag. He's coming in, he's transformed. He's made he's made Rashford, Luke Shaw look better. Um, you got Conte, uh, Conte, sorry, um, that. that that's at Spurs with some of them players. You got even even Eddie Howe and, and like Trippier and players like that. They come in and even Phillips at City. So you got you got big managers and and quality managers molding these players into into players into good players and world class players. So I don't think I don't think that's what you're bringing in a manager for when it comes to the England team. It's more in game management. It's more tactical. When's the last time we've seen England? Win a tactical battle under under um, what do you call it under Southgate. You could say in the Euros against Germany, possibly maybe. But then look at the look at the final against against Italy. You know when you get you go a goal up instead of going for it and killing the game off. It, it's it's a bit of a park the bus job. And you look at some of the teams in in the World Cup that England have played. Like the last World Cup, you played like Sweden. Well, the the, team, the games that he's actually won, he lost to Belgium to once or twice. The other one was in the playoffs, or that third, third, fourth. But he lost to Belgium. But then he was it Sweden, Sweden, Tunisia, Sweden, Panama, stuff like that. Um, Colombia. It was a draw, but one on pens. But in ninety minutes was a draw. Then you're going into this World Cup. Iran drew to Wales. Oh, uh, sorry, drew to the US and beat Wales. I mean. You look at the teams there. They came up against Croatia in the last World Cup, and we saw what happened there. And they come up to another another top team, and again, you could say it's a little bit unlucky. Maybe that goal, if, if Kane puts away the pen, it takes them to uh, extra time, and then you never know from there with Rashford coming on, and especially in extra time, bit of tired legs. But in in hindsight, everything sounds fantastic. But it is what it is. I think Southgate. 
my opinion, the time is up. Who comes in? That's the, that's another question. That's another question. Who comes in? But let me know in the comments. Who do you think comes in if he does step down? A lot of managers are stepping down now. We well, Poch is available. Tushul's a Tushul's available. Uh, but are these guys happy to stick around for four years for that World Cup, or are these managers that um, just want to get into club football and get get rock and rolling? But this tees up. This tees up. Uh, a semi-final that no one really predicted. Croatia, Argentina and France and Morocco. It's going to be a crazy semi-final. If, if these underdogs win again, you never know what could happen in that, in that final and who, can, and who can take home the trophy. But it is not coming home for England. Um, it's not coming home for the GOAT, Cristiano Ronaldo. Guys... Make sure you like, share this video around, leave your comments, hit that like button as well, hit that subscribe. We, we hit over 4K subscribers not not too long ago. So thank you for everyone who supported this channel. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.